Okay, everybody, starting to get serious. The Tesla Cybercab is appearing freaking everywhere. Here's a picture of it in Chicago. We've also seen it in places like Buffalo, New York. We've seen it all over Austin. We've seen it all over California. There's at least eight to 10 of them on the roads testing right now. And for people that follow Tesla very closely, this is a very exciting time because this is supposed to be the car that takes Tesla from about 2 million cars per year to 4 million cars per year or more. And it brings in this sort of transformation of how the company's viewed, not just a car company with, you know, people driving steering wheels and pedals, but also a car that can drive itself. This is because the Cybercap from the ground up per Tesla is designed to not have a driver, to not have steering wheels or pedals. And it uses an unboxed process, which is basically a revolution in how cars are built that makes the building of these vehicles parallel instead of more horizontal. So the simplest way to describe this is with a typical car, let's say the literally the car that you have in your driver right now, your car in that driveway was built by a very standardized manufacturing line process where it's one step at a time. It goes down this assembly line and then these workers come in and they put pieces together on that car, but it's one at a time. So it goes through each step after each step, after each step. And so what you need is a gigantic factory, a really long factory or, you know, multi-level factory where you can pass this car through and then each stage you add parts to the car. Whereas with the Cybercab, it's more a parallel type process, meaning that things happen at once. So instead of building the car first, putting it together, then putting on the doors, then putting on the trim on the doors, then putting in the seats, all these things happen simultaneously on the same sort of line. So it kind of goes this way instead of this way, and then everything gets married up and then you finish the car basically. And so what that allows a company like Tesla to do is to use a lot less space in a factory to build a car, but it also means that they can do a lot more cars at once. And the reason why that's important is because Tesla's goal in the long term is to have this car sell a lot more than any other car they have. They want to sell millions of these per year because the thought process is if they can get to a vehicle that costs very cheap. So the Cybercab is slated to cost somewhere around $20,000 or less to build per unit. And without a driver in the, in the car to drive you around, it's just literally a two seater where the two seats have a lot of room in front of them so two people can be very comfortable, that vehicle should be able to take people from point A to point B at let's say 20 to 40 cents per mile of cost. Whereas your typical car, like let's say, you know, your car that when you use your time and you pay for gas and maintenance and whatever, it's much closer to 80 cents per mile. So the demand for a transportation unit, a car, that's going to cost, let's say less than half than a regular car does, then the demand for that's going to be gigantic. And so you need a lot of cars to go through that manufacturing process to end up satiating the demand. So the amount of people that are gonna want that car is going to be a lot. And that's what Tesla is banking on. So the reason why we're starting to see a lot more of these on the road is because Tesla has the goal to start launching these in April of this year, so April 2026. They had a goal from about the beginning of 2025 to get this production ramped up. And so now they're at the stages where they're building these units that are essentially testing out if the car is ready to be sold to customers. We've seen a lot of the units being safety tested at the Tesla factories where they're freaking, you know, scrunched up and broken, okay, because they have to make sure that it's a safe car. And this sort of aligns with the usual schedule of automakers and Tesla and how they usually test their cars before they sell them to the public. So so it's usually about six months from the first time we see them on the road to when they actually start being sold or made for, for public use. And we started seeing these in around November of last year, and now we're in January. And so they're literally on track to hit that April timeline. Now, what's very interesting about the current cars is that they have steering wheels and pedals in them. So Tesla communicated that the reason why they're going to have steering wheels and pedals is because it's very difficult <laughs> to test a car that drives itself without having steering wheels and pedals because of how new the technology is. You know, you have to put it in these different situations to make sure that it's actually driving. Now, what's very interesting about that steering wheel and pedal is that the steering itself is literally borrowed straight from the Tesla Cybertruck. What's unique about that steering wheel is that it's a steer by wire system, which means that it's a wheel 
that is not mechanically connected to the front tires, to the front wheels. It is electronically connected to the front wheels, which means that it's literally like a remote control. You can you can take the steering wheel from the Cybertruck and just plop it into the Cyber Cab, and then you'll just be able to drive the Cyber Cab around because that is just basically like a remote. It's like a joystick of sorts. And you just plug it in and the car will drive. And then for the accelerator and the brake pedal as well, this is similar technology. It's accelerate by wire or brake by wire, which is again, a electronic connection to the acceleration and braking system of the vehicle and not a mechanical one. So what this allows Tesla to do, and I'll get into my theory in a little bit, but what this allows Tesla to do is to very easily remove and add steering wheels and pedals to the cyber cab for testing purposes, but also if they wanted to, to sell it to the public. And the big question that's open right now is what is going to be Tesla's ability come April to be able to manufacture a lot of these so that they can drop them in areas for use versus the places that will allow them to actually operate these vehicles. And this is the big tension that's going on right now. Tesla is very obviously ramping up CyberCab. It's going very well. We're starting to see it in a lot of places, but they're not allowed to put it anywhere without a steering wheel and pedal. They're gonna be stuck with a factory producing cars that can't be used. And that's the last thing you want as an automaker. And so to back up a little bit, the reason why that's a big point of tension is because there are rules, at least in the United States, really around the world, but specifically in the United States, there is a hard cap of how many cars you can build per year of vehicles without a steering wheel and pedal, which is 2,500 units per year. Now, we just got news a few days ago that Tesla and other automakers are actually going out to regulators to see if they can get this cap lifted to a much higher number. I believe the number is 95,000 units per year. So they're trying to raise it from 2,500 to 95,000. And so what this is gonna allow Tesla to do is to manufacture a lot more of these per year so that they're not stuck with a factory that can only make 2,500 units per year. To put this in perspective, the Model Y, which is Tesla's best-selling car and the best-selling car in the world, they make 1.2 million units of these per year, globally, all around the world. In the United States, they probably make, let's say, probably a quarter million to 300,000, maybe more of these per year, probably more, probably closer to half a million, honestly. The reason why they do that is because if they don't do that, it starts costing them a lot of money because the amount of money they put into the factory to build a car is really, really high. And the only way to get your money back is to push as much metal through that factory as possible. With the more cars you can fit through a factory line, the more money you'll make. But there is a certain threshold you have to hit to actually create a profit. With a Model Y, if they're, let's say, building about a million two per year, the break even point is probably around 750,000, let's call it. So once they hit 750,000 cars and they build more than that, they'll start making money. Where the cyber cab is gonna be literally the same thing. That line that they're building in Texas is probably built, I don't know probably how many units they have planned for Texas. Let's say, let's say it's for half a million cars, of half a million cyber cabs per year. To break even on that line, they probably need to push at least at least a quarter million of them per year, 250,000 of them per year, at least to break even, because they have a lot of money put into the machinery and all that stuff, it's very automated. But if you have a, a sort of cap, a hard cap that the regulators say you can't build more than 2,500 or more than 95,000, then all of a sudden you're gonna be way below your capacity to get those cars out, to build them and actually sell them or put them into use as a robo-taxi, as a sort of self, driving Waymo, like Waymo's on Uber, and a lot of people are familiar with that, right? So what Tesla has to do is be able to build a lot more of these than 2,500 or 95,000. And so if you look at sort of the landscape of where Tesla is right now, they have about 130-ish cars in the Bay Area operating as self-driving robo-taxis where they have a monitor in the car, but the cars are driving themselves. They have about 30 of them or so in Austin, and they've been sort of trickling more and more as the months have gone along. They have no more than 200 robo-taxis between the Bay Area and Austin operating right now as self-driving robo-taxis. So that's one thing they have to go over is like their own capabilities and their own safety profile has to reach a point where they can actually operate there. But then once they breach that, and let's say they get safe enough to where they can sort of put thousands of these in the Bay Area in Austin, the next thing they have to overcome is this regulation that says that you can't have more than X number of cars for a steering wheel and pedal vehicle. Now, of course, for Tesla, it's gonna be very easy to overcome this 
because they can just put Model Ys or Model 3s or Cybertrucks, which have a steering wheel and pedal already in them, and they'll just have people sit in the back. It's not that big of a deal for Tesla, but when it comes to the Cybercab, they're going to be heavily limited unless they are selling these with a steering wheel as well and pedal as well, even not just for robo taxi, but for the general public. I really think as more time is passing, now we're into January, mass production is gonna start here in April. You have this sort of fight, I believe it's on January 13th, the hearing, which is I believe tomorrow, right? Today is the 12th. So tomorrow is gonna to be the hearing for this increased cap. The timelines are starting to get really, 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 really narrow. And of course, Tesla could deploy these in places like Europe, in places like China, in places like the Middle East, like the UAE and Dubai and all these places that are very friendly. But there is these giant open questions around regulation, not even just the safety profile of the robotaxi and the self-driving stack, but regulation that's going to imp impact them tremendously in being able to sell these cars without steering wheel and pedal. If they put that steering wheel and pedal out there, again, because it's very simple plug and play, it's literally an electronic connection to the system versus to how the person is actually moving the car and operating the car, we know that they can do that literally because we see it with our own two eyes on the road right now. It is engineered to be able to have a steering wheel and pedal. If they do that, then all of a sudden, Tesla is going to have a two-seater. Now, two-seaters, you know, historically in the United States haven't done that well. My argument is that because we haven't had a good two-seater, okay? <laughs> We've never had a good two-seater in the United States. But if Tesla puts a steering wheel and pedal in this two-seater that has plenty of room, it's extremely safe, it looks great, you don't even have to pay attention in there when it's driving you around because it has the latest version of FSD on supervised, which based on some of the guidance that Elon has given us, will be reached at a very high safety level once Tesla has 10 billion autonomous miles under their belt. They're around 7 billion right now or so. So by the middle of summer, by late this year, they should be at a place where they can just literally give people the ability to never have to pay attention in their cars as long as they're using the latest hardware that becomes a very easy selling proposition for Tesla. Not just the Cybercap, but they can also do that with the Model Y, the Model 3, the Cyber truck. And that's what Tesla's unique competitive advantage is, is that they have a gigantic fleet of vehicles in the millions of units per year that they can sell to anybody where that vehicle can just drive itself without you having to pay attention. And if you wanna drive, you take over, right? But you don't have to. It has that beautiful screen, it's super comfortable. It's a Tesla, right? Teslas are extremely well regarded for a reason. Even Motor Trend, as of late, said that FSD is by far the best, by far the best driver assistance systems uh, they use. And anybody who owns a Tesla can tell you that. We've been talking about that a lot on the channel. This shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. And so this is what we have to look for right now if you're interested in this story, is the sort of cadence of how the regulation process is going to follow through with the Cybercab Tesla's ability to have it on supervised system with the Cybercab that actually works in the hundreds of thousands of miles without an intervention from a human, so it being so safe that nobody has to take over. In that scenario, that's the only way that Tesla can get to a place where they can build, say, half a million of these per year without a steering wheel and pedal. But to me, that still feels very far away. Like, I'm talking earliest by the beginning or late next year, we'll be at a point where Tesla can do hundreds of thousands of cyber caps per year without a steering wheel and pedal. That is my estimation. Now, I get a lot of flack in the Tesla community for saying that, but I'm just trying to very objectively and factually look at the landscape. It doesn't seem to be moving much. Now, of course, we could get a sudden, you know, this thing passes and it says, yeah, 95,000 units per year, no problem. That's great. Tesla gets a sort of additional ceiling there. And then so that gives Tesla maybe, let's say from April to January, they're able to build 50,000 to 100,000 cyber cabs and still be clear of that threshold well into next year. But once they are fully ramped and they're really going you know, balls to the wall, let's say, so let's say by the middle of next year, that 95,000 cap in a best case scenario then would have to be up to 200,000 or removed entirely. And so the, you know, just for those that are not familiar, auto manufacturing, it follows this S curve. So you kind of start very, very slow. And you know, first few weeks and months, it's like you're making five per week, 10 per week, 50 per week or whatever. But then all of a sudden, once you get really, really going, you have, you experience an exponential 
sort of curve where all of a sudden you go from 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 to 20,000 per week. And all of a sudden you start making a lot of cars very, very quickly. Once Tesla enters that exponential, if they don't have the regulatory environment properly set up, they're going to hit a massive wall. But the backup for them is going to be just putting a steering wheel and pedal in there, right? And then on the flip side, how will Waymo think about this cap? Because Tesla is the only one that can make that many cars per year. Waymo can only make 10,000, if that, per year with their partnership with Zeker. So a really big cap for self-driving is a huge advantage for Tesla because nobody else can do that. And so you damn well know that players like Waymo and Zooks and every other self-driving company is going to be lobbying the government very hard to keep that level arbitrarily low so that Tesla doesn't run away with it because they're the only ones with scale. So this year is pivotal for that. It's going to be very fascinating to see how that plays out. Even if the regulatory and, uh, you know, uh, math doesn't favor Tesla and they're capped at whatever number, they can just sell these with a steering wheel and pedal and people will buy them. They will be able to sell as many cars as they want. That's sort of where I'm getting at. The question becomes what percentage of those are going to have a steering wheel and pedal? And what is a regulatory and performance environment that's going to keep them from achieving their long-term goals? And then after that, we'll talk about the bot and all that stuff, but that's for a different video. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and like the video. And if you want to join my exclusive community, go to farza.fm. We do weekly live streams on Tuesdays at noon central with myself and my community. We'll talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. I have exclusive content on that website as well, exclusive models, exclusive research, and a bunch of new stuff coming down the pike this well this year. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.